Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna take a look at a new method for helping us solve a quadratic equation. That method is called completing the square. And what's really nice about completing the square is that it's gonna allow us to solve for a quadratic equation when we can't use the box and diamond method that we're used to. So to show you that, I have an example here of a quadratic equation where the box and diamond method is actually going to fail us. We're given the equation x squared plus 6x minus 3. And let's go ahead and try to do box and diamond method like we normally would to factor this. And let's see what issues we run into. So as I make my generic rectangle and my diamond problem right next to it, I'm going to start with putting the x squared term in the bottom left corner. The constant goes in the top right corner. I multiply the 2 to get negative 3 times x squared, which makes negative 3x squared. And then I know that on the bottom here is that middle term, the 6x, and I know that I'm going to have to come up with two factors here that will multiply to negative 3, and they're going to add to positive 6. Now as I start to think about that, I recognize that there are only two factors that multiply to 3, and that is 3x and 1x. And if that has to be a negative 3x squared, then I know that one of those two factors has to be negative. Well, if I make the 1x a negative, 3x plus minus 1x is going to end up equaling 2x's, which is not the 6x here that we need. So if I think about moving that negative over to the left side, and now I have 1x plus negative 3x, that would end up resulting in negative 2x, which again is not the positive 6x that I need. So we're done. We can't use box and diamond method. If we come a problem like if we come across a problem like this, we normally would write that it's not factorable and we would stop the problem. It's not factorable. There's nothing we can do to get it into that factored form with those two sets of parentheses. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't x intercepts because there are. There actually are two x intercepts for this problem. The issue is for us is that we're not able to find them using the box and diamond method and zero product property. It's not gonna work for us because we can't get it into factored form. This is where completing the square is going to come into play. Completing the square is another method that's gonna allow us to solve problems where the box and diamond method fails us. Now, the name says to complete the square. And the reason why it's called completing the square is because we are literally going to be completing a square using that equation. Remember our equation here is x squared plus 6x minus 3. I've used some algebra tiles here from the CPM website and I have my equation here shown with algebra tiles. I have x squared, I have 6x's, and I have negative 3 1 tiles. And I want to show you why completing the square, or I'm sorry, why box and diamond method did not work for us. Remember with box and diamond method, we're trying to build a generic rectangle to represent that equation. Well, if I try to build a rectangle using these tiles here, I'm going to notice that I'm going to run into problems very quickly. As I start to separate these out, let's say I move them out like this. I'll turn some of these sideways, right? I'm going to put four to the right, two on top. You'll notice that as I try to move these one tiles in, that I have this missing space here. It's not making a complete rectangle. This is why box and diamond method did not work for us. Now, I know some of you out there might be thinking, okay, well, what if I move this guy sideways and then move that on top? Will that work now? And you're noticing that again, it's not gonna work. There is no way that I can orient these guys, these X tiles in such a way that I'm gonna be able to create a rectangle with these tiles alone. It's not going to work. So that's where the completing the square method comes in. What we wanna do with these algebra tiles is we want to build a square. Well, to build a square using these tiles that I have here so far, I know I'm gonna have x squared here in the bottom left. If I'm thinking about making a square, I'm going to need to divide these x tiles in half because I need to split them up evenly 
so that an even number is gonna go on the right side and an even number is gonna go on the top. Well, since I have six X tiles, if I wanna split those in half, I can just take three of those tiles, put them on the right side, and I can take these other three tiles, I'm gonna need to rotate them, whoops, having some trouble rotating them, so that I have the beginning of what looks like a square. I see here that I have an X squared tile with three X's on the right, three X's on the top. I now have this missing space here, right? I have this missing space here and it would be really nice if I could fill that space in. Now I have these negative three one tiles over here, but remember these weren't enough to fill that space. So I'm gonna sort of just leave them off to the side out there. And I want us to think about what tiles would fill in this place nicely enough so that I was able to complete the square. And some of you might be catching on to this idea that it looks like if I grab these unit tiles and start throwing in a bunch of these one tiles, actually if I throw in nine of these one tiles, that it looks like that would be enough for me to complete this square. And you're absolutely correct. I need nine one tiles here to complete this square. Nine tiles here are gonna allow me to then have a complete generic rectangle where I could figure out what my dimensions are and what my sides are for our factored form. We're able to do this because we're adding nine tiles to this equation. Now I wanna show you what that means with we're actually solving the problem here. Remember, as we were solving this, we knew that this was not going to work, that the box and diamond method were not going to work. But we recognized that, okay, I could still have my generic rectangle. I could still have the X squared tile here in the bottom left corner. And then we recognize that if I'm trying to build a square, that I need to split the six X's in half. And that's what we did. We put three X's here in the top left. We put three X's in the bottom right. I'm gonna do that same thing for my generic rectangle. Splitting the six X in half, so I end up with three X and three X in that diagonal. Now, now that I have those pieces, I can actually figure out what my sides are. The sides here would be an X and an X to make the X squared, and I'd have a plus three and a plus three to create those three X's. And now you're noticing that I'm able to complete this generic rectangle, but I do need to make sure I'm filling in this unknown spot here. And that unknown spot going back to our algebra tiles is where we're adding in these nine unit tiles. I know that I need to add nine in order to complete this square here. And so if I'm adding nine here, we also see that by the fact that I have three times three. Three times three means I need to add nine tiles in this generic rectangle so that I'm completing the square. Now let me show you how that translates to our equation. I have my equation here, x squared plus six x minus three. And we knew that that equaled zero, but remember, we're trying to add those nine tiles in. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna erase that negative three and move it over here to the side so that I can squeeze in here the plus nine. I'm adding nine tiles to this equation. Remember, I still have those negative three tiles out here all by itself, but I'm adding in these extra nine tiles so that I can complete this square. Now, as I go back here, I'm adding nine tiles to the left side. That means I also am going to have to add nine tiles to the right side as well. I can't just add nine tiles out of nowhere. I need to make sure I'm balancing this equation. So to balance it, I gotta make sure I add nine tiles to both sides. Now the reason why we're doing this is because look at this new equation that I'm focusing on. X squared plus six X plus nine. That is what this generic rectangle is. And that generic rectangle has dimensions of X plus three and X plus three. So that highlighted portion 
the x squared plus the 6x plus the 9, that actually equals this factored form. I was able to complete the square where my sides are exactly the same, and I now have x plus 3 squared. Now I still have the minus 3 on the outside, and it's still equal to that positive 9 there. But you notice now that what I've done is all I've done is change that highlighted equation from the sum to the product by adding those nine tiles. I needed to add those nine tiles so that I could complete the square and actually get it into factored form. And now that we're here, we can solve this equation and determine what our x-intercepts are. So let's go ahead and do that. To solve this equation, I need to add three on both sides here. By adding three on both sides, I now am left with x plus three, the quantity squared, equaling to nine plus three, which is 12. I wanna get x by itself, but right now it's trapped by that square. In order to undo a square or the inverse of a square is our square root button. So I'm gonna square root both sides so that the square and the square root cancel on the left. And I'm now left with x plus three equals the square root of 12. Now when you take the square root of 12, you end up with one that's positive and you end up with one that's negative. I've taken care of the positive one. I now need to write another equation where I'm showing that the square root of 12 is negative. And that's super important because remember, when we're dealing with quadratics and we're dealing with the graphs that are parabolas, they usually cross the x-intercept in two spots. And when we think about the zero product property, we usually end up with two answers. It's super important that we remember this step here because we want to try to show what those two x-intercepts are. So now I have these two equations here and I can now figure out what x equals. Now I am going to need to bring up a calculator to help me determine what the square root of 12 is because I don't know what the square root of 12 is. And because the fact that the square root of 12 is not a whole number, is explaining to us why box and diamond method didn't work. Box and diamond method works when we have whole number answers or nice fractional answers. When we end up with the square root of 12, which in a second you're gonna see is an irrational number where the decimal and the numbers after it go on and on forever, that's why box and diamond method fails. So let's go ahead and open up a calculator and see what the square root of 12 is. So I have my calculator here. I'm gonna go ahead and type in 12. I'll hit the square root button. And I see that, wow, that is a pretty large number. And we see that it goes on and on forever. Those numbers after the decimal place. This is what we call an irrational number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round that to three places after the decimal. So I'm gonna say that the square root of 12 is approximately 3.464. So I know for this equation, that will equal 3.464. I know for the one on the right, it's gonna equal negative 3.464. And I still have x plus three on the left side of both of those equations. Now I need to scroll up a little bit, so I have some more room. I can now solve for x by subtracting three on both sides here. And I'm also gonna do the same on the equation on the right as well and I can determine what my x-intercepts are. Now on the left side, I'm left with x equals 0.464. But remember, we don't know if that actually equals it exactly because we rounded the square root of 12. Remember, there are an infinite amount of numbers after this four. So instead of writing equals, I'm gonna write approximately because the x-intercept is approximately at that spot. Same thing for this one as well. X is gonna equal negative 6.464. But again, I'm gonna put the approximate symbol because we did have irrational numbers. And that is how we use completing the square as a method to find our two x-intercepts. We use completing the square when box and diamond method fails us. And it might fail us when they're irrational. But now we have a way to solve those non-factorable problems by using the completing the square method. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.